OpenAI's new open weight model is now available and I couldn't be more excited. I create a lot of AI automation tutorials on this channel and I know for a lot of people it's a real challenge to pay for services like OpenAI, Anthropic and other paid vendors. But the unfortunate reality is that models like OpenAI's models and Anthropic's models simply outperform most of the open source models out there, especially when it comes to following instructions, tool calling and reasoning. And that is why a lot of educators in the space use either Anthropic models or models like GPT-4 Mini from OpenAI. So I'm really excited about the prospect of having an OpenAI model that I can run locally on my own machine or via Grox infrastructure. So if we briefly look at this article, OpenAI released two models, 120 billion parameter model and the 20 billion parameter model. And each of these models are available under the Apache 2.0 license, which means you can fine tune on these models, deploy them and use them for commercial use. And if we have a look here, the 120 billion parameter model achieves near parity with 04 Mini, and just to be clear, this is not GPT-40 Mini, which is a model that we use all the time. This is the more advanced 04 Mini model, and the 20 billion parameter model delivers similar results to 03 Mini, which is an incredible reasoning model. And this 20 billion parameter model is intended to run on consumer-grade hardware, so you do need about 16 gig of VRAM to run this model. But don't worry, I'll show you an alternative for running this model for free in the cloud. So let's have a look at adding this model to N8N. And the setup is really simple. We'll have a look at two options. First, I'll show you how to run this model locally on your own machine using Olama. And if you don't have the hardware to run this model locally, I'll show you a free alternative to run it in the cloud. All right, let's first have a look at this workflow. This is a very simple AI agent node that has access to chat memory, a custom knowledge base, and it's able to send emails. Very simple stuff. Now, we're not too worried about the workflow itself. What we want to learn is how to add this GPT OSS model to our workflow. So what we can do is ask it a question like, what are the current specials? And just to be clear, we are using OpenAI at this stage, so the paid service, but I just want to give us some baseline to compare the results to. So it's accessed the custom knowledge base and gave me this result. Let's ask it to send an email. Please make a reservation for four people on the 8th of August at 5 p.m. My name is Leon, by the way. Let's send this. In the system prompt, we told this agent to collect certain information in order to make a reservation. So the agent correctly identified that we still have to provide our email address and any other special requirements. So I'll just enter my email, which is leonatest.com and no special requirements. Let's send this. And we can see the email node was indeed called and we get this response saying the reservation was made. And if I switch back to my email, I can indeed see that reservation email. Cool. So now that we have a baseline to work with, let's have a look at setting up the GPT OSS model locally. For this, we will install a tool on our machines called Olama. It's a fantastic tool for running large language models locally on your own machine. So go to olama.com and then download and install Olama for your operating system. After installation is complete, you should be able to verify that everything is working by running the command olama, and you should see a list of available commands. Cool. So what we can do now is download the model. So from olama.com, go to models, then search for GPT OSS. And then depending on your hardware, you can either download the 20 billion parameter model or 120 billion parameter model. Now I think you'll need about 14 gig of VRAM to get this to work. And again, I will show you a cloud alternative if you don't have this kind of hardware. To download this model, simply copy this command and in the terminal or command prompt, simply run that command. And this will download the model and afterwards you should be able to send it a message like, hey. And what's really cool is because this is a reasoning model, you will see this thinking process as well. Cool, let's close the command prompt. Then back in N8N, I'm actually going to disconnect the OpenAI node and for the chat model, Let's instead add 
the Olama chat model, then you do have to set up your credentials. So let's create a new credential. I'm just going to rename this to Olama YouTube. Then let's save this. And if you do get this error, all you have to do is change it from localhost to 127.0.0.1. Let's save this. And now the connection was successful. So it's currently saying it can't fetch any of these models. So I'm just going to save this workflow, refresh N8N. And if we open this node again, we can now see all the models that we've downloaded. So you should see GPT OSS in this list. Cool, let's select it. Then I'm actually going to rename this node to GPT OSS and let's try it. So in the chat, let's ask it the exact same questions that we gave GPT-4 mini. So let's say, hey, and cool, we get this response back. So let's ask it, what are the current specials? And cool, we can see it's reaching out to the knowledge base and our model is thinking. And cool, we get this response back and this is indeed correct. Now, of course, the response times will take a lot longer than using OpenAI, but the trade-off is that this is actually free and running on your own machine. So it might not be ideal for a real-time chat app like what we're doing here, but it will be perfect for a research or planning workflow where you don't really care about the time it takes. All right, let's try its tool calling. So let's say, please make a reservation for four people on the 8th of August at 5 p.m. My name is Leon. So again, I did not provide the email address or special requirements. Okay, our model is running. It did attempt to check something in the knowledge base for some reason. Okay, then it's saying to finalize the reservation for four people, I need to get your email address so we can confirm everything. Once I have that, I'll send a reservation. All right, let's say leon at test.com and no special requirements. Let's send it. All right, so it sent the email. And when I refresh my email, we can have a look at this. And indeed, I received a reservation request. Now, I did notice during this process that the model reached out to the knowledge base when it really wasn't necessary and it attempted to send an email before it collected all of the information. So these models are not quite at the level of the actual paid models, but it really won't take a lot to adjust the system prompt to fine tune this behavior. And I also want to mention that this is a reasoning model and at the moment, there's no way to adjust the reasoning effort within the Olama node. Even if I go to add options, there's nothing in here that allows me to set the reasoning effort. So chances are, if you had the ability to increase the reasoning effort, the results would be way better. And hopefully N8N will add that option soon. Now, if you don't have the hardware to run this model locally, I'll show you a free cloud alternative that you can use right now. So let's break the connection to this Olama node. And what we'll add instead is this Grok chat model node. So Grok with a Q. Let's add that and let's add a new credential. And now we have to provide a Grok API key. I'm first going to rename this credential to Grok YouTube as I already have a credential. And then for the API key, what you need to do is go to grok.com, click on start building and then sign in or sign up for an account. Once you've signed in, click on API keys at the top right, then click on create API key. I'll just give it a name like n 8 in YouTube. Let's submit this. Let's copy the key and add it to N8N. Click save. And cool, our connection was successful. And I forgot to mention that Grok won't cost you anything. They've got a very generous free tier. Now, if you use the service a lot, you might hit some usage limit and you might be prompted to add some billing details. But for following along with these tutorials and just learning N8N in general, this won't cost you anything. Right, so back in N8N, after we added our credentials, we can now see all the models that are available in Grok. So if we scroll down, we can see the GPT OSS 120 billion parameter model, and of course, the 20 billion parameter model. Now we could select the 120 billion parameter model, but I do want to compare these results. So I'll select 20 billion parameter. Let's go back and then let's test this again. So let's ask exactly the same questions. Let's say, Hey, and cool, we get a result. And this time it's coming from Grok. And again, you're using an open AI model for free. Let's try the knowledge base. So let's ask it, what are the current specials? 
and it's hitting our custom knowledge base. And one thing about Grok is it's incredibly fast. We just got our result back, which is accurate. Let's also get it to send an email. So please make a reservation for four people on the 8th of August at 5 p.m. My name is Leon. Let's send this. And it's saying, hey, you need to provide your email address along with any special requests you might have. What's interesting about the Grok instance of this model is it didn't go to the knowledge base first or attempt to send an email yet. So I'm not sure why that improvement is. It could be that Grok is running this model at high reasoning effort or Olama is using some quantized version of the model. If anyone knows, please let me know why this is down in the comments. Okay, let's say Leon at test.com and no special requirements. Let's send this. And now it's called the Gmail node and it's saying it sent the email and swapping back to my email. I've received that reservation email and all of these details are correct. So what do you think about OpenAI's GPT OSS model? Is this a suitable replacement for something like GPT 4.0 mini? Also, if you would like to learn how to build a customer support chatbot like this and embed it into a website, then check out my complete N8N AI automations course over here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.